Hi all, we're back here in the shack, in the lab. Uh, tonight, um, I'm, we're going to look at the Baofeng, uh, what I call the, the T1, uh, the T1 Mini, uh, also known as the BFT1, I think on the manual. Um, it actually just says Mini Walkie Talkie, but it's really a lot more than that. Um, we'll get into some of the features here right off the bat. And I'll give you a quick tour of, of what this looks like, and we'll compare it to the UV3R, which we've looked at in the ubiquitous UV5R. So at a high level, some of the basic things about this, uh, this isn't a proper unboxing. Oop, sorry, my reflector is bleeding in. There we go, turn that down. So um, this is a basic radio. This is not meant for, I would say, uh, frequent use. This is a nice travel radio. If you want to use it as you're uh, kind of traveling around and listening to things, however, there's some better options for that that I'll talk about too. But for the most part, this is a nice way um, that you can at least keep something on you, on your person even, especially if you take the clip off, uh, slip it into your pocket, and then have it with you all the time because it's really small. And of course, like you can see, th this thing is absolutely tiny. But with it being tiny, there come some compromises. So first and foremost with this, and when we turn it on, we'll see that a little bit more. This only has 20 channels that are programmable. And by that, I mean you can even program them on the radio. So there's no way to actually program these using the interface. There's also no way to actually go through channels. So in frequency mode, um, it's only memory mode. So that's kind of a disadvantage, but what would you really expect with something this small? The other disadvantage and kind of a, a compromise is this small antenna. It's really only made for um, uh, VHF, uh, not UHF. So, or maybe I have that backward. It's definitely one or the other, but you're not going to want to transmit on uh, VHF. It's only UHF. So UHF transmitting only, and you know you can program VHF in here, but you're not gonna wanna transmit because the antenna is just not made for the uh, two centimeter band. The other thing that's kind of a um, compromise on this is that it is very loud. So whoever designed this, they basically went with the intention that you go from no sound to really loud to super loud to really extremely loud. Um, so that's another compromise. And this isn't a true unboxing, but we will look at, you know, basics here. So within the box, you've got your manual, of course, the radio pocket clip is going to come uh, separately. You've got to put that on. Of course, I've been using this for a while now, so it's not, you know, brand new out of the box. Other than that, pretty simple. Baofeng lanyard, um, and it does come with a charging cable, which is a pretty simple little guy here. It's got the power brick with USB, which goes to micro USB. Now, what's really interesting about this radio is obviously, just like with other Baofengs, they don't include a programming cable. So you will have to go and get one of these. This is your USB micro uh, in to the radio programming cable with USB on the other end. I think I got it for $8.99 on Amazon or $9.99. But anyway, for the most part, it's pretty easy to use. So up top, in between the antenna and the light, we've got the on button. It's going to tell you how many volts you've got. There is a two button mode on upstart where if you hold this button in with the light button, it will tell you how many volts you're transmitting. There's a one watt and a three watt mode, three watt high, one watt low. Of course, you've got your light and then you can go into your menu where you can cycle through all of the things like beep, which is shut off, vox, voice, alarm, scan, and all of the other options, as well as coding uh, for receive, transmit, um, squelch. And then there's uh, obviously tone and offset aren't in here because they're only in the programming software. So that's the only way that you're gonna actually see those. So when you go back to your actual, um, sorry, interface for your, I'm gonna mess with squelch. I think we had it on nine. When you go back to your channels, you'll be able to cycle through these. So, first and foremost, 
the other thing that's really unique about this uh, radio is that even though this thing looks like a knob, it's not a knob. It doesn't even, you know, like break, click open, and then you can turn it like with the UV3R. You have to rely solely on the actual, um, and we have this locked, which is why we can't cycle. You have to rely solely on this up and down button. So you're going to have, uh, what I've programmed in here is a bunch of uh, VHF channels locally, UHF locally, and then I also have VHF and UHF for some areas that I frequently travel to. So just in case I have this, then the channels are already in there. Um, and that only filled up 18 of those uh, 20 channels. So if we do volume, and we'll turn this up, you can go to the FM radio, which, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm not going to listen to the radio on this bad boy. Um, or you can, of course, listen to your channels. This is the weather band. Um, this is a local repeater, local repeater, local repeater, etc. And I will say the, the actual sound's not bad. So that's the local no weather station. Um, it's really not bad. Uh, it's just very loud, like I said. Um, you can turn that down. Uh, and it's a really easy user interface, um, even though it does have some quirks about it. Um, I'm not really sure on the transmit range yet. I haven't done a transmit test on it yet. But as far as receiving goes, I'm pretty impressed so far, especially for something that costs about $14. You can still get these things on eBay. They're not discontinued. Um, as far as I know, they're still making them um, because they're still selling them in uh, pr pr like pretty easily. The UV3R, that's not the case. The UV3R is totally discontinued, and even on um, distributors, it's saying like discontinued. With these, they might be actually discontinued from production, but retailers are still selling them in some places. And of course, on eBay, you can find these. This particular one I bought brand new but it was on uh, Mercari, the uh, kind of like eBay-esque uh, buying, selling website. Uh, so again, you know, on the interface, other than these main buttons, and I'll turn this off, you've got PTT, you've got an SOS, and then you've got the programming side here. So uh, on the programming side, this is for your headphones, your mic, or your actual data. And then on the bottom, um, there is a, I'm not sure if this is just here for show, but there appears to be some sort of drop-in charging opportunity, but this is where your USB micro is for charging. Just like the rest of the Baofangs, um, when you're receiving and you're transmitting, the LED that is right here will illuminate uh, color based on what you're doing. And there is a small hole here for um, the lanyard, but I replace all these lanyards with uh, County Com reflective, uh, I believe this is 220 test line, uh, five strand with a glow, uh, with an actual glow marker. That way you just can't lose these things because this is ref this reflects and this is glowing. Um, so for the most part, it's a really good radio uh, to just mess around with. It is a, you know, what I would consider a niche radio. Uh, because it's not something you'll want to really like use all the time and and uh but it is something you could carry with you just out of convenience if you want to hit the NOAA weather station um compared to the UV3R the UV3R is about the same size as far as frame goes um and this has more capability right because when you actually look at the UV3R you're able to actually cycle through modes and you've got a stubby antenna on the UV3R, which does make the form factor a lot bigger. But at the same time, um, if you really, you know, like you could like, like, you know, put a Ranger band on this thing and, and still throw it in your pocket because the antenna is really just as long as the radio. So, you know, the UV3R is just as capable, more capable uh, when you think about it. It is thicker. So the T1 is, is, is thinner than, than this, uh, especially with the clip in consideration. This thing is just slim. Um, there's also, I would say, like less bulk uh, because this is much heavier uh, 
than this, uh, but probably by a couple ounces. Um, this actual knob, you know, you could bump this and stuff like that, I guess, and, and this really doesn't have any knobs. Um, so really, if you wanted like a mobile radio to carry on your person for whatever reason, um, and you don't want to get like a serious radio, or just to throw in a bag or in your armrest of your vehicle, really either one of these options is okay. But again, you know, the, the UV3R is getting harder and harder to find. You've got to get these things straight from China. And then even though the T1's still fairly accessible, um, you know, I, I don't know who would go out of their way to spend the same amount of money almost on this or this as the UV5R, which I've also got over here. <clears throat> I'm just comparing all three, right? Like this is going to be a lot uh, more versatile. You can key in your actual frequencies. There's more memory. Um, you can pretty much do everything you need. Uh, you can even program pretty easily on this actual radio. Um, I, even though I've, I used Chirp for this radio, I did use the proprietary Beofang um, software for this. Uh, and to be honest, this, this UV5R is just programmed by hand. Um, but again, you know, if you want something to just throw in your vehicle, sure, you, like you could throw one of these in there. But at that point, I would just suggest getting something serious like a Yesu. But if you're just starting out and you just want to play around with a radio and learn about tones and learn about um, offsets and learn about programming, then, you know, going with one of these uh, or even this isn't going to break your bank. And you're going to at least learn about ham radio in preparation for taking your test, which I, I would hope that you would do. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up on... on the two bale fangs that that aren't seen as much as the uv5 are um you know the t1 again specs 20 channels that you can save uh, it's much less than the actual uv3 are you've got to program this thing via computer which again if you are mobile with this that's kind of a downside right you can't actually flip through channels in frequency mode like you can on the uv3 r this you are stuck with what you've programmed so if you are on the east coast and you travel to the west coast and you want to hit some repeaters there and listen in you're not going to be able to unless you have those programmed in there ahead of time or unless you have your laptop and you can actually program them in on the fly so that pretty much wraps it up and at the end here i'll do a just a quick wrist check uh today i've got the deep blue master 1000 this is an automatic uh, rated for a thousand feet 300 meters rotating bezel with a OD green nylon NATO style strap. Uh, this thing is huge. It's uh, I think 44 or 45 uh, millimeter uh, case. Um, it's also really, it's got a really thick case. I think it's like uh, 18 or 15 or 18 millimeters or something like that. But uh, lovely watch, automatic uh, power reserves, not fantastic on it, but it does its job. It's, it is really heavy, bulky, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's very, very tough. Um, and it, it holds up Sapphire Crystal uh, Seiko automatic movement as well. So, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, these are the three radios that, you know, I think if uh, folks are looking for Beofangs, you're going to run into this one first uh, and any variation of this or more powerful. But, you know, the 3R and the T1 are kind of the redheaded stepchilds of the Beofang uh, family. You don't see them as much, but they are interesting. They certainly are usable and they certainly are cheap.